As you walked in the door, the kitchen was to the right and the living room was to the left. The brick building, um, it's all little townhouses connected together and ours was number seven. I don't know how to explain it. Um, we were all of a sudden in a house full of furniture, full of everything, some clothes, food, um, and I was just so really grateful. Inside that building uh, at Fletcher Street, it was like a castle to us, you know, and it was really big. We loved it a lot. We had a little hallway and a nice living room where the piano was, where we used to sing and dance right there. I grew up on Lewis Street, right across from St. Patrick's Church, right next to the Holy Trinity Church. I'm a very proud Acre boy. Outside the property area, the backyard, the front yard, especially the front yard, it's nice. Housing is good for life. I live a long, long time there. Yes. It's okay, now you have a new house. <laughs> The North Common Village actually was constructed in 1937 and somewhere around 1946 I moved in there with my mother and my three brothers. Uh, if it wasn't for the lower housing authority we would not have a roof over our head. Uh, my father had just got killed uh, in, an, in an accident right after the Second World War. It, uh, we moved over to Lewis Street where we lived for about 10 or 11 years and uh, growing up uh, in North Common Village was really uh, it was a joy. Uh, it was just, when I look back upon uh, living it, uh, in the uh, housing, um, it was just a terrific environment. Uh, it was very friendly. People really enjoyed and liked one another, and uh, it was just all good stuff. You know, we were all poor, but we never knew we were poor. And uh, we, we, we just had a wonderful life. I mean, it would be something to leave the housing, to go up to Vespa Country Club at six in the morning, get back at six at night and make $2 and go home and give a uh, seventy-five to your mother. And so when you had four boys doing that, it, it was just, we thought nothing of it. Or go to the low boys club on Wednesday night with 10 cents in your pocket, five cents for Coca-Cola, five cents for a bag of trice and potato chips to watch a movie. And we just had no idea that we were poor because we, you know, we, everything was just really good. And we always had a, a hot meal in front of us and we had uh, friendships all around us. Uh, so whether you played in the North Common or went to Vespa the Caddy or whether you shine shoes on Market Street or go over to Charlie's Corner, it was just a tremendous environment that we grew up in. And uh, I'm, I'm blessed to be able to say that uh, I'm a product of the housing project. Uh, in 1988, 87, 88, uh, uh, I lived with my mom and uh, I was a junior in low high school. Uh, one day the uh, city of Lowell uh, inspector came in to, to inspect the apartment and uh, you know, they decided that the apartment was deemed unsafe to live in. So, uh, you know, I, I somehow my, my mom and some agencies got involved and then they uh, found a place for us at, uh, at Low Housing. Low Housing Authority gave myself and uh, my family an opportunity to, you know, live in in an affordable housing and uh, that way I, I was able to stay focused on school you know instead of spending my entire time to uh, you know work just to pay rent you know I, I we, we couldn't afford it so uh, so that's why that's why we ended up in the uh, low housing authority we went into public housing on um, the North Carmen Village. I was born there in 1944. And there was 17 years difference between my brother 
and uh, 16 years between my sister and myself. So oh, and Garen Chavis was superb. Was We had wonderful, wonderful neighbors. My mother was so close to our next door neighbor, Aunt Chaddock, and we and knew all the, uh, the, the neighbors, uh, Glover Damaris, we knew the Banthas across the street, all the Hopkins, and many, many more families there. My mother was very good with, uh, you know, with meeting people, and she was a, a loving and uh, wonderful person. We would go downtown to Brockman's. We would go down to Kennedy's Butter, uh, Butter and Egg store, and we used to go to the Bon Marche, Pollard's, all the stores, the Bell Shop, all of them. The jewelry stores, she used to love to watch the jewelry stores. And uh, we went to the, uh, the, the, the uh, Furrier a couple of times. And uh, all, we were always, always downtown Lowell. I made a lot of friends in the housing project and a lot of them are still my friends today. We talk about the good times, the arts and crafts we learned there in the North Common, making the gimp. We used to do the pod holders. We used to do everything. They they had all those services there for us. You know, all of the neighbors were all intertwined to each other. We would always be talking, sitting upstairs, sitting on the steps and talking about this, what happened today, what happened yesterday, what are you going to do? And there was a closeness. It was a close-knit community. I was born in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, and then... I we fled um, Congo because of a war when I was two and we moved to uh, Rwanda in a refugee camp and we lived there for um, approximately two years and then we moved to Uganda and I uh, lived there for five and a half years and then came to America. It was, they picked us up from uh, Boston uh, and it was at nighttime and we uh, went to the house, and like I said, um, I was very surprised because everything was already inside there. Um, beds, because um, we used to sleep sleep on beds that are, were made of cardboard and um, sheets, and we finally, I finally had a bed to sleep on, and that was <laughs> that was really good. We came to America. We knew that we had to focus on school, so that was our first priority and we are <laughs> we knew that we shouldn't forget where we came from always remember how you got here why you're here because uh, it's very important to know who you are even if you're in a new place so. I always knew that I I wanted to come here because of what my family always talked about or everybody around me um, and I didn't really know what to expect. I kind of guessed because of what I saw in shows, uh, movies, and that's what I always thought. And then when I got here, I got to experience it for myself. At first, I saw it as a normal thing because I didn't really know because this was a new place and I thought, you know, everything was supposed to be like this. But then as I started to talk to other people, I was like, I live in low housing. They're like, what is that? And um, all of a sudden, I felt like it was something to be ashamed of. But over time, I just came to realize that it's not something to be ashamed of because that's my home, that's where my family is, that's where I feel safe. I have a warm bed at night, food, so yeah. It doesn't matter how I got there, it's just, it's my home. I grew up in the city of Lowell. I'm the youngest of nine children. We lived on 59 Walton Street in the city of Lowell, right across from where Wang started back a number of years ago. Uh, it was a very nice neighborhood, and we had a lot of, as I was a young fellow at that time, uh, I played a lot of baseball with all the, all the kids in the neighborhood, and we always had a great time. And um, like I say, I was the youngest of nine, and um, I was kind of spoiled by eight beautiful sisters and brothers.
they had public housing at Shaughnessy Terrace, and that was for returning veterans. My brother and I and our families uh, moved in to 216 Shaughnessy Terrace. We lived there for five years. My brother and I had a double wedding. We married sisters, and believe me, we've been close ever since. The Highlands neighborhood where I grew up, all we did was play baseball from like nine o'clock in the morning, run home to have a lunch, be back over at the field for 12 o'clock, and then play till five o'clock at night, go home, have dinner, be back at the field until the lights come on. And then we had to get back home. It was a wonderful area to grow up. Um, a lot of nice people, and I've stayed friends with a lot of the people I played ball with back in the 1940s. Seven O'Brien for me is like a, my house. Mm -hmm. No one apartment is <laughs> my house. <laughs> the first thing that I always will remember is there's this huge rock in the front. And I think that was like the spot that kids used to hang out all the time. And a, a little tree, well now it's a big tree, but when I was little, it was, was kind of small and now it's bigger. And I just remember that always having a neighbors, there was always neighbors around and things like that. So that's what I remember. I think my mom made me active in the community. Um, and the reason being is because when we were younger, she would go to everything and she would bring us along. And I still remember us in Rolos and going to events and people like, oh, those are Francie's kids and stuff. But um, I loved it because I was able to see something different and I was able to meet people and like people that I thought I would never meet. And um, I used to, when I was younger, not that I'm old, but like when I was like in my teenage years, um, I used to be part of Casey Family Services, um, which no longer exists anymore, unfortunately. But there used to be a really active community there. So it was like housing people and residents would be able to take part of their activities and programs. And I remember always hanging out with friends there. And we were able to like make changes in the younger kids' lives. And I really loved that. I really loved being a role model to younger kids and just a role model in general and then mm -hmm. that's how I got um, close to CBA where I work now too like she always brought us somewhere to teach us like you know you gotta work hard like she was saying earlier like her values is work hard you can do better but the people over there is like a family everybody like a family when coming summer everybody, everybody may go outside cooking everybody go eat you bring soda, she can bring the plate, she, you know, like a family. I love that. We lived in an apartment 304, and it was uh, my mother and father and my, my sister Joni and myself. My, my father had um, joined the Navy in, in 1944, and that's why we moved in there. As you come up the stairs, it was all grass, and then there was a big hot top area. And then after that were the clotheslines, and that was all fenced in. Right there on the corner, there was a, a, a beautiful pink rose bush. It, it was enormous to me. When it rained, we were allowed to put on our bathing suits and, uh, and play in the yard and in the, uh, the enclosure uh, where the clotheslines were. Uh, there was a pool at North Common, but we weren't allowed to cross Adam Street to go over to the pool. So uh, when it rained, that was, a real, uh, that was a great treat because all the kids would come out in their bathing suits and splash around the puddles in the yard. And the roofs in those days were flat and um, they were all uh, stones um, covering the whole roof. And there was a pathway down the middle of the roof with rails on either side. And they went from one door. There was a doorway that, that, um, that protruded. And, and from that door all the way down to the next door, the rail would be uh, so the workers could walk or whatever. And on um, the 4th of July, we would go up onto the roof and watch the fireworks. 
Uh, I don't know where they were being set off, but it was a great view. We saw it. It was great sitting up there. And then on special occasions, I don't know what they would have been, um, we would sit up on the roof. and All the neighbors would sit up on, on the roof as well. So it was a gathering place, even though it was just a, a you know a three foot wide strip that we could could be that we had to stay on. Um, they brought their chairs up, the kitchen chairs. I remember having fried egg sandwiches up there, and uh, and so I think everybody brought a little bit of food, and so it was some special occasion. I don't know what it was. My parents uh, bought a house on Third Street in Sunnyvale, and so we moved. Uh, we, I kept in touch with uh, Patsy Mullen for a few years, but as I got older after high school and when I was working, um, so many of the girls that I went to school with were, um, I remembered who they were. Even today I, I know a few still uh, that uh, I see occasionally. So th that's kind of nice because we all have the same memories of when we were at St. Patrick's and, and uh, living in the housing. I came to Lowe, I live at Fletcher Street uh, on top of the Acre Pubs, second floor. Um, lived next to Antar Cleaners and it was, it was a good place. So I came here with my family, I have, uh, my whole family including myself is nine people. So I have three brothers, three sisters. My, I have my older sisters and I'm the second oldest, I'm the oldest son. And uh, you know, just a lot of responsibility being the oldest son. Yeah. First year, oh, first year was, it was rough, you know, coming down here, getting accustomed to the cultures, don't know the language, uh, don't know where to go to to ask for help, and we just have no one to basically help us. We just basically just trying to survive and get along, you know. We get involved in low housing authority. Uh, we know a friend of my, my dad friend, he, he, he knows we don't have a home, don't have a place, so he refers to low housing, we apply for it, you know, we don't know the language, we don't know how to write it. So they help us out and we, we got in. They help, they're such a good people, you know, they, they just helpful. I feel now they're even more helpful. Now they just, it's like a melting point. They, they, they finally, I would say, integrating a lot of their community, their clients, the people they're helping out to shine more, you know, back then you don't, they don't really shine us that well, I wouldn't say shine us that well, but more of like, now they're like, hey, you know, these are the community we're serving, these are the people we want to lift up, these, they got their own story, their own, um, their own realness. I started in 1987, I was 23 years old, about to turn 24, it was in March of 87, about to turn 24 at the end of the month. Uh, started out as a housing manager at the North Common Village. One of the things that I'm most proud of is we have spent our capital funds wisely. I think if you um, were to go and look at some of the developments that we have, you would think that they are uh, private sector. Some people think they're condos. We get a lot of compliments from our insurers who come and look at our properties and talk about the quality of work that's gone into them. Uh, I'm proud of the way the residents have responded to a lot of the good capital improvements that we've made in the developments. Uh, they've had more and more respect for the, for the property. Um, so they've had you know, dramatic changes over the years. We spend a lot of time, money and effort on developing the staff. I first try to recruit uh, better uh, than we have in the past. So we, we bring people in the, in the front door, so to speak, with uh, high quality education, uh, good skills, certifications in areas, so we bring in a good quality staff and those that were, were legacy employees there before me, we spend a lot of time developing them as well through education, training programs, uh, etc. So we, we, you know, it's important to us to have a good staff and we invest in them. Since I started there at the Housing Authority and have met more people and have got to see the buildings inside and the outside, um, you know, I have a, um, you know, as good a perception I had when I was a kid growing up as an adult looking back at it, um, you know, the, they just fit into the neighborhood. We also have an after school program for our youth. Uh, we have a scholarship program where we've given out hundreds of thousands of dollars in scholarships to uh, high school kids in public housing or in our Section 8 program. Those are some of the services that we provide uh, beyond the bricks and mortar, you know, of giving them a good foundation home, st stable home and um, you know, heat, good hot running water, um, and some safety into the neighborhoods. 
I'm a senior at Fitch Park State University and I'm a political science concentration in international studies with the three minors in economics, peace studies and the, uh, international politics. I'm an alumni from Law High School, to, uh, class of 2015, and uh, I started applying uh, to Law or Housing Authority Scholarship back when I was in high school, my senior year, and I applied back then and I got it, and pretty much the requirements was uh, to demonstrate, uh, demonstrate my um, academics, uh, 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 volunteering, such things like that. Yeah, and since then I've been applying every year, so this is like my last time applying since I'm graduating college next year. <laughs> uh, the scholarship helped me with my tuition, other expenses. I didn't have to worry, like asking my mom, especially like coming from low income family, I didn't have to worry uh, asking my mom, especially also having uh, my other sisters who were also in college. So my mom didn't have to worry like he, uh, wondering where we were gonna get the next money also when school was rolling i wasn't like really working to support myself so such scholarship helped me to like further my um my education through books and the other expenses so after i graduate i have big hopes <laughs> i um i'm eager to actually attend masters in a, um there's this school that I'm really interested in. It's in London, London School of Economics and Political Science. And I'm interested um, actually majoring in a, um, uh, development management. And I want to work with international organizations and maybe be uh, um, program directors. So the Lowell Youth Scholarship helped me in a lot of ways where I can actually focus in my education, focus on my grades, focus on my major, just to help me not s stress about the financial like part of it. it, it did a lot of great impact. Every penny counts, it really helps. <laughs> okay. When I was a kid growing up, um, I always wanted to find something to do after school and I found the Learning Zone and I attended it as a student when it first came out because low housing made an after school program for the kids in the housing authority but they also included other kids that's in the local area around there and I attended it and it helped me a lot, past school especially. <laughs> it was the first year, so everything was still new. We had board games, we had, we had um, laptops, which is amazing, because we had those little mini laptops back then when I joined. But now, kids are getting tablets, so kind of feel old. But, <laughs> but yeah, we, we, the, the staffs, when I was there, helped us with our homework, helped us get better grades, helped us work on, especially our weaknesses, like, I never realized, I guess, growing up how much low housing authority really helped me until I would say after I graduated high school, it made a huge impact because growing up when you're a kid, you don't really realize that you don't worry about bills, you don't realize about anything, but you don't realize how much LHA really helped you. Like I'm a first generation of my family. It helped me a lot. Without them, I don't know if I could even further my education, to be honest, and I'm very thankful for that. We had to help people in most cases who is in desperate need of our services. So as a worker, we come to work, we do our job, okay? Uh, we face so many challenges every day, day in, day out. By the end of the day, yeah, you would be, um, people would be so exhausted, go home, but we, you know. After all, at the end of the day, we collect our paycheck and we go to our own cozy home. That's to us as a worker to the applicant, okay? For whatever reason, they cannot afford. For whatever reason, it could be their, because of their income, because of their disability, or because of their family situation. They don't have, or they cannot afford to go to a place like that. So they are seeking for your assistance. Look, asking for a reasonable, affordable, and stable home. It's not too much to ask for. We live in a country that we send a man to the moon. That's not much to ask for, just for affordable housing. And I would say, whoever that coming, if I retire today and you're going to take my position tomorrow, this is what I would ask you to do. Okay, as a worker in a social service agency, extend your hand and say, yes, we will do whatever we can to help you within the limit of the law. 
And yes, if you, okay, can be in that mindset, you'll do a fine job. Understand, understand that your decision will have far implication on people's life. I think it's eight months that we bought our house. Um, I actually was thinking of buying a house, but I didn't know how to go about it. And I translate for LHA sometimes, and in one of the meetings, they talked about a program. And it's called the Family Sufficiency Fund Program, and they were explaining how they help you, you know, with your savings and the process of buying the house and this and that. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna take this opportunity and learn more. <laughs> so I called the person in charge, um, Michelle, and she explained the whole thing, and then I was like, I wanna sign up. And she's like, you know, it's a five-year contract, and you know, there's a whole bunch of goals and things that you have to do in the process. And then the great thing about it is that um, your rent, I forget the percentage of it. Um, there's a percentage of it that goes into an escrow account for savings, but you also have to save yourself. And that helps a lot because you're saving and then you're ha like not half, but whatever the percentage is, is also saving for you. And it, it helps you like know like, okay, I can get there. Um, and it was awesome like that program is really cool it's really awesome i would recommend to anybody who's in that position of buying a house and um michelle is great <laughs> like oh, she yes. is oh, awesome like yes. she like taught me how to do it little by little mm -hmm. and what i needed to do and what steps that i needed to take and it was just like so smooth like everything was smooth it mm -hmm. wasn't like bumpy or like oh my god i have to do this and mm -hmm. um I think it all depends on the person too. Like for me, I love to do a lot of research before I invest in anything. And with that research, they'd be like, yeah, how do you know that? I was like, I, I, do, I do some stuff, you know, like I gotta make sure I'm doing it right. And when I got it, Michelle was there um, with us and I was telling her mom, I really wanna buy a house. Like I wanna move you out. Cause she always says, I wanna have a house. Like I wanna be able to like plan and you know, not have like, you know, have a fence and be able to do things that I can do in a home that I can't do here. And I was like, you're gonna get your house. You know, we'll buy a house, we'll buy a house. And when I told her, she's like, seriously? We're like, we're doing this? And I'm like, yeah, mom, I wanna buy you a house. And we did that and I think Michelle was more excited than us <laughs> when I we were doing the closing. Michelle, yes. It was just really cool and it was a mm -hmm. really interesting experience. And um, I would recommend that to anybody who can, you know, get to there. Yeah, like, I think when you buy a house, something that I learned was make a great team and everything will flow. And that's what we did. Like, we, we found the great team. We found people that actually cared for us and wanted to help us. Mm -hmm. And it was just amazing. Like, I love my house. It's been eight months. Still a lot of boxes, but um, it's a working process. So. Mm -hmm. But I love Michelle. God bless you, Lord, Michelle. <laughs> when I go inside in my house, I say, thank you, Lord, for my house. But I thank you for Michelle. I, I would just say to you, to if you ever get knocked down, just stand up and just keep moving forward. Because if I can go from shining shoes on Market Street for 10 cents a shine and go to the Massachusetts State Senate as one of the few people in Lowe that grew up in the housing project going to the Massachusetts State Senate and be part of the, uh, the political history of Lowe growing up in the housing project. If I can do that, then guess what? You can do it too.